All right, here we are. Mom just dropped us off in the Rubicon, and we're gonna do our little hike. It's not her mama, and I are gonna make a little hike. And since I don't really know how the fishing is gonna be, and I haven't done a really strong search report on the fish, haven't really talked to many of my buddies down here that that do most of the fishing. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll just do a how to review on um, how to catch striped bass from the surf. Items that you're going to want to have when you come down to the beach to do surf fishing. Uh, if you want to be successful consistently, you need to buy and invest in, in quality gear. I can't stress that enough. Um, or you can come down and just get lucky. You know, go buy yourself a couple gas station nets, uh, a couple gas station rigs, and you'll be off and you might get lucky, you might not. But uh, I, I, I try to invest in better gear each year. The more I fish, um, I find that I run my gear down pretty quick so my biggest my biggest my biggest uh, concern is good gear having quality tackle quality gear it's just gonna make for a, a, a more comfortable day and uh, probably most likely a more successful trip so the first thing you want to have is waders you need to have waders uh, it doesn't matter I, I prefer buying a higher end pair of waders because after my third or fourth trip La Hodgman's uh, Frog togs, a few others have have just they leak. They leak on me, and I haven't found a really good solid pair except for Sims. Sims would make some really good pair of waders. I recommend at least spending the money on the waders and the jacket. That way, your outerwear will uh, it'll last longer. You put it through a lot more rough conditions than you could with the other gear, and you can keep fishing through the tides. I am I'm a big believer in fishing through at least two to three tides. Uh, you can't just come out and fish one tide and expect expect to see things happen. Uh, fish like to work with the tides and you need to catch the tides and you need to fish through the tides. Many of them and uh, it'll work. So I got my frog togs. I don't spend a, a whole lot on, on boots so I go to Big Five and I buy my frog togs. Uh, I got my Sims waders and I wear my Sims jacket. Waterproof. I always like to have a polarized pair of sunglasses uh, just so I can see through the water a lot better. I can recognize fish, bait, and most importantly, protect your eyes. So that's post, that's pretty much my outerwear. A hat, you know, I don't wear thermals underneath these. These are pretty well insulated. Uh, they keep me pretty warm when I'm out hunting for bait and stuff like that. And, and jigging, when I get out and start jigging a lot, I get warm. I sweat, I take the jacket off. Same with that bait nut. Uh, as far as uh, equipment goes, I like to carry a sand rake that you can buy, you know, at Bass Pro Shops. You can buy these just about anywhere. You want to get a good sand rake. Don't don't be buying any of those cheap little live bait nets that you can buy a big five. Uh, that's ridiculous. You look ridiculous doing it too. Don't do it. Get yourself a nice get yourself a nice rake, or you know, get yourself a pool a pool cleaning pole, and go ahead and uh, mount yourself like a strainer, like a, a noodle strainer would be even better than coming out with one of those cheesy little nets. Uh, it, like I said, it just looks ridiculous and. Don't do it. Get yourself some good gear. Get yourself a nice rig. I'll get out there and do a little sand crab for you guys and show you what kind of sand crabs you want to look for. Uh, I've caught I've caught crabs on hard shells and both soft shells. They it's hard to say if they prefer one or the other really. I've caught a ton more on the softies, but I found bellies full and full and full of hard shell sand crabs on these striped bass. So don't be afraid to use hard shells if you can't find soft shells. Maybe put a trailer on them, you know, a Berkeley Gulp uh, a bunker or even one of the Berkeley Gulp red worms is a great trailer for a hard shell crab. Gives it a little color and might entice the, uh, the striped bass to bite those as well if they're not biting the softies. But, you know, you can always stack small softies if you need be or, uh, or whatnot. 
It's also a good idea to bring a sabiki rig because you can always come out here and catch a live mackerel, smelt, and sardines. I didn't bring a sabiki rig, but we can show you what it is. But uh, I can do a whole nother review on that if I get enough comments and uh, enough, enough asks for it, I'll do it. But for the most part, you know, get yourself some matter gear, some good equipment. That way you can come out here consistently and do the same thing every time and hopefully catch fish every time. Uh, with that said, if you want to have a couple of sand steaks, I only brought one with me today. You know, a simple sand steak, I cut it down, it was like four feet, it was too long, I didn't like carrying it on my backpack. So, I just carry this one. Usually I carry two, but today, because I only have so much time to fish, I just came out with this family, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jig for a while, and I'm gonna have use my, my long rod, and let it, soak, let it soak some sand crabs and see if that works. So, I'll go over just what I'm going to use briefly as far as my jigging, my jigging stick. I use a Dobbin, Dobbins Champion Extreme DX742SF. It's a, it's a lighter tackle rod. Sorry, the camera. Um, I've got a Shimano Stratic 4000 on here with 30 pound braid uh, spider wire on this one. I think it was just because I got free, a free spool of spider wire, so I, I threw it on there. I, I usually use Power Pro or I just use Maxima monofilament most of the time but out here on the slider tackle I'll run a 30 pound with a 20 pound uh, 20 pound leader I know it's super light super light really doesn't serve much purpose other than uh, just a little stretch between my braid and my lure you know, I usually just try to finesse these fish in with light tackle I'm gonna use a Daiwa SP minnow I believe they call this pearl trout pearl or whatever uh, any any you know, on bright days, use light colors. On, on dark, overcast days, you want to use dark colors. Um, and don't be afraid to use either or at, at the same time. You know, I, I like to throw four or five different color variations out there just to see if I get bit. And I'll throw them 10 to 20 times each. I've caught very large perch with these, and I've caught some good-sized striped bass. But most of the time, we're catching our bigger bass on, uh, on large sand crabs. That's usually what we get. So, I'll, I'll, you know, it's just a simple light tackle Dobbins uh, with a Stratic 4000. That's my jigging rod. Light tackle. I love it. Hopefully it's cool someday. It doesn't happen, so when it does, then I'll, I'll beef up my leaders and all that other stuff. But for the most part, I take it easy and I just come out here to have a good time. So, I'm trying to make it last. Now, I'm fishing with my van stall. I've got 300 yards of 15 pound monofilament on there it's what it it's what it, it recommended it's what it came it's what you know it's, it's, it's suggested monofilament that I put on there um, you know it could probably hold 600 yards of 40 pound 500 yards of five to six hundred yards of 40 pound braid it's just got a giant arbor on here Van stall makes a ton of different models of, of 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 spinning reels that I just I really really enjoy so I'm this is kind of my meat stick right now. It is a popping jigging rod, jigging stick. I run it on the Genesis 10 foot uh, modern, modern fast, and three quarter to four ounce. It's a great rod. It's a two piece rod. Um, Steve Yoon over there at ODM Rods is just a terrific man. I've gotten to know him a little bit um, through social media over the last year, year and a half, almost two years now. He's sent me a lot of really, one of the only vendors that's actually sent me anything, t-shirts and rod cases for my rod and I uh, I just highly highly recommend uh, his line of rods over at ODM I believe it stands for outdoor monkeys but uh, they don't really sponsor that very much but I love the name I really enjoy the name a lot it was one of the reasons why I, I bought the rod just because I love the outdoor monkey I feel like I am an outdoor monkey so uh, just using this rod having this rod on this rod it, it's it's quite nice it's different than any other surf rods that I've used in the past and I don't think I'll step outside step outside the ODM rods when it comes to surf fishing and uh, you know getting it done. Stick to the ODM rods, good stuff. Other than that, you know, use your light tackle, use your heavy tackle. It's really all about what's best for you, what you catch fish with. Um, I always try to take a look at what everybody else is doing. to kind of show you guys some uh, some of the right bait to use. See if we can get a close up on these here. 
not so much that guy. Well, that guy's soft on top and hard on the bottom, but these are your translucents. This one's still a little bit somewhat hard, somewhat soft, still good. But there you go. There's some fatties. Some nice fatties. So you want to fill your box up full of as many softies as you can. And uh, if you feel like you got a good good amount, start fishing them hard. I would, uh, I would, I would get your casts out about every minute, so for two and a half, to five minutes. Do not get the day. Back up and keep moving and keep using those soft. Okay. All right, I'm gonna show you my my setup, my rig. I'm using a one knot number one owner hook, live bait hook, Carolina rig with a slider. I'm gonna run a three ounce. It's not too windy today, so I'll run a three ounce pyramid sinker. I paint them green, so I know they're mine. My buddies like to find, find their way to my buddies' tackle boxes. And then we'll grab a couple of sand crabs that we just picked up real quick. I was able to grab about four or five softies, small, small size. I'll probably throw two or three on them, the smaller ones, I know they went off. Well, I'll make it. I'll put the biggest one on the bottom. So I kind of stacked them today so I get enough in my box. They're softies. Let's see how they go. Carolina rig. Bob, low tide. So, on another note, always be looking for sand crabs and soft shells. They can't dive quick enough, and they can't dig quick enough. So when the tide comes in like this, and as it goes, and as, it, as, the, as, the, as the wave starts to go out, you can start to see little softies sticking up. It's also another way to just run and grab them real quick. 